about that time for the Benoni. And if you don't know the Benoni, it is the Son of Sorrow. So with a name like that, you know that Black is taking risk in order to beat you. So let's get into it. And we've got the same theme with the Binko Gambit. We take space when they're giving it to us. And let's first go through the Benoni sidelines first. Not going to go too in-depth into these, but let's first start with a check Benoni. And this is an opening I play from time to time, even though I think that, especially with modern day engines, it's hot garbage, um, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So the engine in some of the best lines for white, it's north of a pawn and a half, and we haven't even left the opening yet. And that's just kind of ridiculous. This line that I'm about to show you, I, I feel poses significant practical problems for black who's just lo locking up the position. We're gonna put our knight on e2, and here the natural move is castling, but uh, when I did my series on the check Benoni, I recommended h5 here, but uh, honestly, it's like the best of the, the bad options because it, it ruins potential counterplay that you normally have with an f-pawn break, and white can get this flexible pawn structure and if you've ever seen pawn storms with Samish Kings Indians, in Bishop E3, Queen D2, Castle Queenside, and you're eventually going to get in a pawn break on the king side when you're ready. So it's just interesting play with H5, but I still feel white carries a substantial edge. So Knight G E2 castles the natural move. Now here's the real plan. We've locked up the center. We're getting our knight to g3, and one of the typical motifs in this position is black wants to trade off his bad bishop by going to g5. This line directly plays against this idea with h4. And you go, well, but Brian, how, how about I just take the free pawn? And white will take the free point here, hitting the bishop, because if we save the b, we're looking at mate. And I've often had this type of position in practice, and this comes from an instructor that I worked with in the past, Grandmaster Gregory Serper. And this is following a game that he played in Reno in 2006. G6 was played, H5, and allows the trade of the, the pieces to take place. But it's a riskless, just better game for white. And I'll quickly go through the moves as... White can play on either wing. Just gets the better of it. Full harmony and coordination of the pieces. Got a protected pass pawn forever on d5. And that's definitely going to be enough as we get there. So that'll do it for the check Benoni. Now let's go to the snake. And the snake Benoni is... Seen bishop d6 to c7 to a5 at some point. And I like this game from Title Tuesday from 2019. <clears throat> White just makes natural developmental moves, gets a huge edge, and wins by move 27. So let's go ahead and see this. Knight f3, and since our bishop can't go to f4, next best thing is g5 here with the pin. A6, we play A4 to stop the expansion with B5. And castles. Queen C2. And this, this is pretty typical standard development for white, and yet black is a bit awkward. Bishop H4. And another typical thing we see in the Benoni. Ideally, if we're given some time, we're going to get that in. But black isn't giving the time. So we're playing in the center. And after bishop g3, white already has pretty substantial edge. And the position blows up with white having the better of it. And already this is plus three or better. And after it takes mate. <clears throat> so coming to the main event, the actual Benoni. And we've got d6. And we're back to the same theme that I liked 
with my recommendation for the King's Indian defense, an early H3. And in a lot of Benoni lines, there's either Bishop G4 or Knight H5 to mess with us, and we're just not having it. H3 shuts down these ideas. And after G6, Knight F3, Bishop F4, and we have our structure. So this is kind of an addition to our King's Indian video where we'll have some more ideas that we can implement in the structure now. So A6, we want to stop the standard expansion, so A4. And now let's go over one of the more aggressive attempts by Black, where Black is going all out. So knight h5 anyway, and f5. And what I love about this is we're just allowing him to come to us, much like we do in the King's Indian with the same structure. Bishop e2, I'll castle, and if queen e7, we can actually sacrifice this pawn because it's very, very difficult for black to get out of this mess at this point. The best he can do is flail a bit before we get our breakthrough pawn on d6, and white has an easy task ahead of him here. So the other way is the immediate pawn takes, and in the game, white played queen d3, but you can keep these pawn sacrifice ideas in your head. Knight e4, and again, we see the theme of bishop and knight coordinating to hit the weak backwards Benoni pawn. Rook takes happens in knight e5. A lot of trades and we end up getting an interesting imbalance but it doesn't last long from the Croatian Cup 2016. So we've only got a few more example games here. Let's first take a look at rook e8. And on bishop e2, we've got two paths here, knight e4 or knight bd7. Well, let's first start with knight bd7, and we're back to this theme again. Once we've got our picture, can we get to d6? If we can't get to d6, can we keep tension and play for, say, an e4, e5 break? Different things we're looking at. Here, we can go knight d2, and we can follow up with c4, putting pressure. So now, how can we continue the pressure? Queen c2, knight a3 shuts down the potential of counterplay with b5. Bishop's tucked away, no issues there. And king h1 getting off the long diagonal. And when we can't make the d6 attack work, we go for the e5 break. And it's the transition between these two plans is what makes it happen for white. And very much in Binko style, black sacrifices a pawn for play. And just like in our Binko Gambit lines, it's questionable if he gets enough for the pawn. And good technique by white leads to a win in this game. Not the best technique, but 2018, rapid. So I'm assuming there was a time situation there. Okay, so bishop e2, knight e4, takes, takes, and back to our old tricks, knight d2, and knight c4. We're less concerned about the d6 pawn in this variation as much as we've been able to get black's rook completely off sides. Black's queen side has not been touched at all, save for the A and C pawns. And we're now completely safe with the bishop pair. We have more than enough compensation for the pawn. And I like how white just calmly gets rid of the piece. And now black ends up in a bit of a bind. And things just kind of fall apart quickly here for him. Bishop e5 is a just brilliant looking move. I mean, one, if d takes e, you lose your queen. And if queen takes, you lose the rook. It's not often you're able to put a piece where it can be captured by two different pieces, and it's immune 
So that must have been a fun move to play in the main game. And after F6, the one passer has been stopped and White just needles away at the position until he finds a tactic winning the queen. And now we need to create a passer in order to get counterplay. And no hurry at all. That's the thing. We got our passer. We've stopped the counterplay. And that's enough for black in this game who resign. So hopefully you're getting the overall ideas as we're going through this series of what to look out for. First, we went over the check Benoni, and once we lock the structure, we need to remember knight e2, followed by this plan with h4, where white gets a pretty good game. Then we went to the snake Benoni, in which case we get natural development. Don't forget a4 when they play a6 to shut down that b5 counterplay, and white generally gets picturesque version of development where black is struggling and way behind. Then back again to our Benoni where we see h3 followed by bishop f4 and typical plan in the structures to go after the d6 pawn, knight d2 to c4. Remember, where do my pieces go? What are my middle game plans? If you know the middle game plans, you got more than half the game of chess where you don't even have to think. You know. When you know, you can play fast, you can put pressure on your opponent, and you get yourself good games.